Welcome back little coders to another video on my channel. On this channel, I talk about Roblox Studio scripting so that you viewers can make your own games on Roblox. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about magnitude. So before I actually start scripting the magnitude script, we got to go and actually talk about what is magnitude if you're wondering. So behind me here, I have two characters. This is the little NPC, and this is the assassin over here. When the script is ready, this person is going to be trying to attack this one. So, the magnitude will be sort of like, imagine an invisible circle that goes around this character. If this little noob over here is near the circle perimeter, or inside it, then this person, or the assassin, will attack the NPC. That's a sort of broad understanding of what magnitude is. Now that I've sort of explained it, we can get into actually scripting. In here, I have a prepared script. You might be looking at your screens on whatever you're on and thinking, what are you talking about? There's nothing on your script. Well, I do have something called Control Y. I mean Control Z, sorry. That can give me all the stuff that I have because I have prepared this so I'll be going through it one piece at a time so that it seems simpler instead of showing everything that would be going over all at once and I'm a slow typer so yeah it helps out with that win-win <laughs> so if we do here we're gonna be adding some variables the zombie torso we're just calling it a zombie for now as the bad guy but so, <laughs> local zombie torso is script.parent.torso, and local zombie humanoid is script.parent.humanoid. This now we're going to be doing a function which will find the target other than itself to run after. So local function find target. Now we're going to be adding a local variable which is called aggro distance. So we're trying to find something that is within 100 studs, aka the measurement that we're going to be using, that's what studs are, for it to chase after. So if, like I was saying, if the noob isn't within 100 studs, which is actually pretty big for the magnitude, then it will go and try to attack it. And we're going to be adding a local target. So this target is going to be trying to have a target to go after. So right now it's nil because we don't have a target yet until we run the game. But once it does find a target, we will change this nil into torso and then it will start attacking. So after that, whoops, oh, let me just move this. Okay. So now we're gonna be using a for loop and it, what it's going to do is it's going to loop through, like the, this comment here, looping through all the humanoids and torsos in the workspace and detecting if there's anyone to chase and making sure that they don't chase themselves as well. So right now, we're, this is just for finding something to chase in the first place. Because it needs to know if there's even anything in the perimeter for it to even chase something. So we got to script that as well. So for IV, I threw B in pairs, brackets, game.workspace, get children, do, local human, it might be an error right now, but local human is equal to V, find first child humanoid. So we're trying to find a humanoid and a torso that is available. That is not the its own torso or humanoid. We don't want that either. So local human equals to be find first child. Same thing with torso, but with torso. If human and torso and V are not in script not parent. So this is the part where we actually make it so it doesn't chase itself. So we're making sure in this if statement. So if it already found something, it'd be like, oh, I found something. And then it will have to go through this part. If human and torso and V are not in script. So if 
if those torsos that it found are inside the script.parent, aka the assassin, it will not use it or also chase itself. So if it's not, then we're gonna check the distance. So it's gonna scan everything from like for everywhere, everywhere in the explorer, but then it has to check of if it's in that perimeter. So check distance. If zombie dot torso, we're calling it zombie like I said, dot position is minus torso dot position dot magnitude. Here's where magnitude comes in. So if the position minus the torso position dot magnitude so we're just getting the magnitude which would be a, which would need to be at least 100 studs so if it's less than 100 studs then we're going to do aggro distance is equal to zombie torso dot position minus that dot magnitude so we're just setting aggro distance equal to this right here then the target would be torso. Now we have a target acquired. So instead of it being nil, now we got it as torso since it has value now as the poor NPC. So we're adding the ends here. So now we're turning the target back to its original value after it's dead. So if we have it as torso the whole time, if we move it away, it will still continue attacking. So we have to return the same value we had before, so that it's back to nil. So return target. Then the last end. Then under here, whoops. So now we're going to be lo looping each second for target and walking it and walking in a random direction until it finds it. So we also needed to have that AI vibe or sort of, you know, vibe or feeling of it actually being AI. You may have seen some kind of AI, like a zo the zombie here, zombie. Like this one, for example, or this one. These two probably have like a whole entire script just for it to be moving. Don't worry, it's not gonna be like that. It's not gonna be that humongous script. It's fine. It will just, it's only one line actually. So don't worry. While wait one, do. So this is for attacking the target. So after it's found everything, done all the work, figuring out if the click, when it's on aggro time, then it needs a way to attack. So we gotta use something that we've learned in my last video, pathfinding, and I'm gonna move, make it move to the other character. So local torso is equal to find target, AKA the name of the function we just did. And if torso, then, zombie humanoid move to torso dot position so the humanoid if we move this to the torso dot position it will move everything else so we're basically just moving the bad guy to the poor little npc the torso dot position it's is npc dot humanoid so it will attack anything with a uh, torso whoops else so this is the part where we actually make it seem more ai like where we make it move around randomly it's actually pretty easy not as hard as other scripts oh, that just came out really long <laughs> else zombie humanoid move to zombie torso dot position plus vector three dot new we've learned about that before math dot random 50 50 zero math.random5050. So it's going to be moving in different directions because of these vector threes. And that's basically just that one line and it's done. And of course, end. And end. So that's basically the script right there. So if you have this already, feel free to click the run button to test it out. Should be loading in now. As you can see, he's attacking. We got to save him. He cannot die. This little citizen over here needs to survive but as you can see though and 100 steps is pretty long like look how far i put it now it's walking randomly this npc he's just walking trying to find a victim if i drag him over here now he's on aggro mode he's ready to just snipe this guy but 
this little citizen, he has done so much for the world, I will save him. <laughs> so yeah, basically it would be a chase like this. You could add way more to this, it wouldn't just be him chasing, you could possibly... And I'm also doing a very casting video soon, so you could actually make it snipe the character for some, for an example. So, yeah, I feel excited. I'm doing ray casting soon. I know some people were asking for that. And, yeah, that's basically what it is right there. That's the script. You can change a couple things like the aggro distance. I'm going to make it 10 because I think 100 is pretty long. Like, this guy got to have, like real good vision if he can see from like a hundred step that's a lot so like right here i believe yeah now he's walking randomly he can't find him but if we move him a bit closer he might not be there yet but now he might find him yeah there oh wait. okay 10 steps is a bit small i guess yeah it takes a while you need to be like really close never mind i'm gonna change it to maybe 50 studs something not too big but not as big as a hundred, you know, so we're gonna try that. Okay, Mr. NPC is being attacked, oh no. If we put him a bit farther, uh oh, okay, we'll save him. Maybe over here. Now he's walking randomly. Eventually, if he's closer, like this. Yeah, there, now he's attacking. So it is a bit of a distance. So you can change the aggro distance so that it's not super big, like he has mega superpower visions, unless that's what you want, then yeah, totally, you can make whatever number you want. But what I mean is that, you feel free to use this script in your game if you wanted to add your own AI that attacks. So that's it for this video about magnitude, and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye!